Hey there everyone, this is Lucky7DX, welcome back to Let's Play Okami Den, and Kuni? Is that you, Kuni? You're, you're not like the fake Kuni again, right? You, you, you're a re Yeah, yeah, that's definitely real Kuni. What are you doing here? Because in the last episode, we tried to fly up to the thunderclouds to gear up the lightning in the underground runes, and then we got blown away, and then Chibi hit his head on a log, because we're back in Agata Forest randomly for some reason. Not flooded anymore, so it's kind of cool we get back to Agata Forest when it's not flooded. But then Kuni sort of shows up and he's like, we can't be together right now, I have other things to do. Are you breaking up with me, Kuni? I thought we were soulmates. I thought we were lovers, why would you do this to me? My life has no more meaning. But alas, was it a dream? Was it not a dream? Was it some sort of log concussion induced hallucinations? Who knows? But here we are in Agata Forest, um, he is luckily alive after taking such a heavy blow. Man, it's a good thing he like, has his whole head straight after all that. And uh, Crow is perfectly fine too because, you know, they wouldn't just like kill your partner, that'd be a little weird. He's not going to be the next Cooney, that's for sure, he's not just going to randomly disappear and only show up in hallucinations induced by vegetation. But, um, as you can see, we meet Kokari again, you mermaid fishing jerk face. Sorry, I'm still not going to forgive you for that. Still not going to forgive you for that. And now I may have forgiven you, but I don't. You have your bunny pelt hat. You know, that bunny, that bunny was alive one day, and he was probably a really happy bunny. He probably had a really happy family, he had a pretty good life, and now he's on your head. And now he's dead. And it's all your fault. So, whatever. Cooney. Uh, I love how, how Karab mistakes Cooney for a raccoon because it, it kind of sounds like Cooney. It's, it's, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. But, um, yeah, basically we just get a little uh, talk about how Shibi's lost Cooney, blah, blah, blah. And eventually we get directed to go to Madame Fawn to learn how to recover our wings because we have lost our wings. Without our wings, we have no way of getting to the Thundercloud or, for that matter, really getting out of the God of Forest. Uh, besides, oh, the nice thing is about being in the God of Forest is we can go back to Shinshu Field now. As you guys know, we do have some side questy stuff we can do uh, over in Hanna Valley. There's one of those manifests we can take care of, which we will. Um, I'm going to kind of spend this episode uh, wandering around Agata Forest, and next episode is going to be um, getting all the side questy stuff. I'm gonna, uh, there's going to be a few villagers we can do, a lot of interesting stuff we can do, and then, you know, after a couple episodes, we'll really be able to get really back to the plot for, like, several episodes. So... Really, in terms of side quests, it's going to be this, like, next one, two episodes. And and even then, this episode is not really that side quest -y. It's mostly just exploring the new forest. Um, and then, after we finish the underground runes for the second time, it's going to be, like, our last really big side quest segment. And then no more side quests. Then we're done with all the side quests. The game just like, nope, you know what? There's enough side quests for this game. Here's a shit ton of plot, have fun, and you know what, I'm okay with that, because plot's always a, lot, a bit more fun than side quests. I'm not sure how much you guys enjoy side questing, but it is a part of gaming, and thus it must be done. But um, we're going to go ahead and visit Madame Fawn, and stuff, and things, and um, she, well, in case you guys were wondering, uh, you know how we can never finish the fishing equipment? Speaking of the fishing equipment, we can actually find fishing equipment, dude, in this building right here. But, um, you know how there is a treasure chest in the, demon, in the demon market that we couldn't get? Maybe that might be a hint, this whole Madame Fawn thing and blah blah blah, of what exactly is going to go on with that whole those treasure tre chest in the demon market soon enough. Um, I'm sure you can guys can probably get an idea of what's going to kind of be happening around, um, sometime soon. Anyway, if you want to go back to Shinju Field, it's right up here. I just figured I'd show uh, the path, because the whole the forest isn't flooding anymore, so the layout of it is pretty much completely different. So, that being said, I'm going to you know, take a little bit just to sort of help reorient you guys. If you want to get to the Guardian Sampling, it's right here. And you actually should go to the Guardian, Camp Guardian Sampling, because there is a villager we can recruit here. And this one's actually important. Um, this one is actually part of a side questy side quest. Like, more of a side questy side quest than villagers. Also, I'm going to just dunk... Uh, corral the water there. Take that, corral! Your hair is now all wet. Whenever he walks around, it looks like he's wearing a tiara, and I'm like, you're a pretty princess, dude. But uh, it's obviously not. Is it? I don't know. I can't even tell what he's wearing in his head. He definitely looks like a tiara at times. So it's kind of like, ha ha ha, you're a princess. But um, yes, princess. Corral is a Disney princess, clearly. But this forest woman's gonna be recruited. She's gonna be a part of a major side quest. We're going to deal with that side quest next episode. We're not gonna deal with it now. But in the meantime, we're going to level up. Because, I guess they're technically level ups, I, I guess we you call them praise up, health up, something up, I don't know, but we got ourselves another soul unit, so now we're sitting pretty at 8 and 8, like I said, 10 and 10 is the max, so we are going to reach the max pretty soon, um, 
I'm not gonna say, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how soon, but it's not gonna be too much longer until we get the max praise. I mean, granted, the praise mostly comes from the Psycho stuff, and like I said, the Psychos are wrapping up, so... The main story isn't going to give us that much extra praise after this point, so... It's not like we have, like, mega amounts of leeway of praise to get the max praise, but, um, you still get a bit of leeway. So if you missed a thing here or there, if you haven't 100 percent it, you can still probably get max praise. Um, but, I mean, you, can, you don't have, need every single tree, for example. But, um, do all the major stuff, it'll help you along your way, and the earlier you get the max praise, you know, the earlier you can get 10 and 10, and that's always really helpful. So, why not? Anyway, as we're gonna see here, we got ourselves a crystal! And we got that kind of music that sort of indicates a manifest. This actually is a part of a manifest, but which part, which manifest is it? You'll see in a little bit. For now, we have to go uh, grab some stuff, and I forgot to bring Karo off me again! Urgh! I'm so bad at this. Anyways, uh, bring Karo over here. There's gonna be obviously a cracked hole there. We can go ahead and bomb that open, and good stuff will happen from there. And um, there's also another treasure chest, treasure chest over here as well, so worth your time to go this way. Uh, now that we don't have Nami, we can't really, uh, swim in the water, but Corral can levitate over the water, so that's pretty much better. So, Corral pretty much surpasses Nami in every way, except for the fact that Nami can summon water spout from her hair. I don't even know how that works, but it does apparently. Um, Corral, unfortunately, has no elemental powers. He has his crazy levitate skill, but, um, I guess as a, uh, uh, sort of a, a negative part of it, he, he doesn't have any sort of, uh, water, element, blah, blah, blah. There are other uh, partners that do have elements. Kagura has that sort of exorcism element. I'm not sure if you'd count that, really. Um, Kuni has nothing. Kuni is just by far the worst partner. My phone is, of course, going to go off. It's been going off all day, so I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to record. Um, but anyway, we're going to just forget it. Um, we're going to go ahead and find across here. going to skip that island like a pro because it doesn't even matter. And over here is going to be another one of this mysterious manifest that we're going to need. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell us right now, this manifest is story required. You're going to see in a little bit. I mean, Crystal Slip, I think you guys can probably get a bit of an idea, you know, what, um, who, who our uh, mysterious manifest giver is going to be and why it's required. I think it's probably pretty obvious. For some reason, like, I, I just couldn't attach to Corral there. He just didn't want me to vine to him. Corral, I know I called you a princess. I know you're upset by this. W why you no love me, Corral? Why you no love me? Come on. Anyways, uh, we're going to just go ahead and make our way back here. You can't really skip the island again. The camera angle doesn't really let you, so just use this island as the way back. Uh, sometimes the camera angles can be a little screwy when you're trying to guide and circle across. Just do it the way the game intends you to. Don't try to skip ahead, or you can actually find yourself... I, I vaguely remember me getting some sort of weird situation where, like, I got sent the crowd there, and I couldn't get the camera right enough to find over there. And I was sort of stuck until I could get, like, the exact perfect camera angle, because so I was trying to, like, manipulate it to skip an island. And it really didn't work out in my favor, so I do recommend that you guys, you know... Do it the normal way, usually, because sometimes the camera angle can sort of screw you over. The game intends you to go from island to island, so go from island to island. I mean, it makes sense. Anyway, if you head over here, if you guys remember the original Kami, uh, Madame Vaughn used to live in a cave. And she does live in a cave. Not this cave, though. It's a cave over there. But we're gonna explore this cave first, because this one has a cracked wall. That might mean that, that, means that there might be something special goodies inside. Although, if I remember correctly, we can't get anything in here at the moment. Um, yeah, it looks like a thunder chest in the background. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go back there just to explore. Also, because I believe there's a new enemy, I might as well just pick it up while I'm here. I mean, that being said, I'll obviously back, be back here later on when we can actually open that treasure chest, because I believe there's a masterpiece in there. Uh, the, the, the first five masterpieces for uh, four and five are sort of just scattered around these tre like, treasure chests like this one in caves or in other places where you need to backtrack and use powers you didn't have at the moment. Um, I don't remember what these things are called, but basically, they have all three elements. When they are, when they don't have an element, you can attack them and kill them. Very much like the fire eyes and whatnot, like, you know, when they have their elements surrounding them, you can't exactly hurt them. But, um, that was totally a valid bloom game. Come on. What are you doing? Uh, obviously you're going to have to wait till they, uh, become a lightning element, because they do switch between fire, ice, and lightning. They do have all the elements. So you have to wait till they're a lightning element, and they'll be able to use a skill in order to open up that treasure chest, but we do not have said skill, thus we must back away from this and go ahead and grab that thing later. I'm running really low on ink right now, that's a little concerning. 
but I think I should be decently fine. Like, what, what happens if you use your last ink? I forget if the ink regenerates after a while if you're uh, if you run out of ink. I for, I think you probably get your your, your ink back because it'd be really awkward for you to be stuck without ink. I do think it regenerates once you have no ink. It's just that unlike Okami, it doesn't regenerate over time. It only regenerates when you're out of ink. I think. I'm not even 100% sure on that, to be honest, because I rarely run out of ink. I mean, you, the game is pretty darn good at giving you copious amounts of ink pots, so you don't ever need to worry about the whole ink thing. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't actually know the answer to that off the top of my head. Kind of interesting. Anyways, uh, here's a guy with Kurokuchi Yakuchi Village. It's another one of those animals. This one's actually very important. This one is also part of a side quest, so this one's definitely worth your time to go ahead and pick up. You can actually get something really cool from this one. This is definitely one, like, if you're going to recruit someone to the village, recruit this guy, although he is mandatory to recruit anyway, because he's right there in your path to the main story, because this is Madame Fawn's house right here. He's right in front of a freaking save point. There's really no excuse to miss him. However, his side quest is something you can skip over and is a little tricky, so, uh, it's worth doing, though. Believe me, it is definitely worth doing. Uh, you'll see why when we do it next episode. Like I said, we'll be doing all this side quest stuff in Yakushi Village next episode. Because today is a God of Forest day, and I'm not gonna skip out on a God of Forest. We already we spent a whole like freaking section of this LP fixing this forest up, and I am certainly not gonna skip out on it now. Anyway, as you can see, Madame Fawn, um, she lost her fortune telling equipment. So yes, all this the crystals and slips and stuff they've already recovered. They've already recovered half of it. Um, she um. It, it's for her. It's main story because we need to. She needs to get back before she can tell our fu our fortune, our future, or whatever the hell she does. And uh, we do need that in order to base um continue on, just like we did back when Kuni was our partner. And our first time through a kind of divorce, we needed Madame Fawn, and we need her once more for good times. However, um, the way this works, those two, the first two are found in church chests. So we have the two found in church chests. The other two are found inside enemies. So um, keep an eye out for red scrolls. And we'll go ahead and fight those and get the other two back through battle. So uh, it's kind of a half and half sort of deal, kind of interesting. Anyway, we've seen this incline before. Um, this is part. This is uh, one of the places we could have accessed. This is actually back where Madame Fawn used to be. However, I am heading up here because there is. Uh, you can see I, I did kind of cut there. For some strange reason, it took me forever and a half to draw a proper fire burst. Like I, I, I don't know what I was doing wrong. Like I drew like 50 million fire bursts. And the game was like, well, that's not a fire burst, that's not an infinity sign, you're a loser. And I was like, screw you, game. But um, you can pick up Master Priest Part 4 a little earlier here. All of these leaf files are supposed to pick up with a, with a different skill, but I'm sort of like cheating the system. I'm like, uh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and pick it up with fire instead. Which is kind of cool, I mean, if it makes sense if you can set leaves on fire, they're going to go away. So it's kind of cool that, you know, despite it not being the proper way to do it, um... The game still is logical enough to be like, okay, fire does beat leaves, here you go, you can have it. So, uh, kind of interesting. Anyway, I, I accidentally run to this guy right here, and I just like said accidentally in the weirdest way possible. I accidentally run to this guy here, because I thought he was a red scroll for some reason. I was like, you're red! And then the game's like, no, no I'm not! And I'm like, oh, whoops, wrong guy. So I accidentally murdered two black imps, but that's okay, because that's four... Uh, I think that's four more demon skins for me and an extra 2,000 yen, so I am not complaining. Let's go fight the real red one here. I, I, for some reason, I thought that it was this one. I kind of looked at my map, and I was like, oh, there's a red one over here. And then I just ran to the first girl I saw, not even looking to see what color it is. Apparently, I'm colorblind. Which, well, actually, my um, my dad my uncle, like all the all the, uh, the the previous generation's guys on my dad's side of the family are all color, colorblind. Uh, but it's not pet. I believe colorblindness is passed down through... Uh, women, not men, so the women have to have the gene for the men to be colorblind. It's some sort of weird genetic thing, Imabobber. Something to do with the X chromosome, or something like that, or one of the chromosomes. And, yeah, so you beat the Thunder Ear pretty easy, and then, you know, you get, you get yourselves a bone! So we got ourselves a bone. No boner jokes, thank you very much. Anyways, um... But yeah, funny colorblind story. I was playing laser tag, you know, one of those those ones with the lasers, and like there's and it's red green colorblindness, and the teams are red and green. So none of the people in my family, none of the uh, the, the the father figure, or the father uncle, blah blah blah, could tell who was on whose team. So we had to use a system of passwords in order to d differentiate teams instead. Fun times when you're playing laser tag and you have to yell eagle eagle in order for your teammates not to shoot you in the face. Uh, colorblindness can lead to some fun stories, apparently. So that's my random story of the day. What colorblindness has anything to do with Okami Den? I don't even know. 
but really I'm just fighting Thunder Ears and things and stuff, so it's not like it really matters. It's not really, it doesn't really even matter what I talk about, I'm just sort of herpa-derping around. That guy wasn't here before, so I believe you do need to talk to Madame Fawn before you, um, you, can, you can get these guys to spawn. So, you can get the first two, you get the first two treasure chest ones really um, ahead of time. But you can't get the enemies because they don't spawn until you talk to Madame Fun. So make sure. Hey, hey, that rhymed. That was really cool. Um, but there is see the Black Imp, so we get to fight the Black Imp duo all over again. Fun times. Uh, as usual, just reflect their hands. They actually aren't that hard as long as you realize you can reflect their hands. If you don't realize you can reflect their hands, they're actually pretty tough enemies. So. Like a lot of enemies in this game, like you know, maybe I make the combat look really easy, but it's a matter of, if you, if you don't know the weaknesses to the enemies, it actually they actually can be really tough. Like I actually have, in the past in my practice runs, I've died to this guy before. Um, like not in my practice runs, in my first run through of the game when I didn't know what I was doing, I've died to these guys before because I was like, how the hell do you fight these guys? And I was like, herp a derp or fuck their hands back. Projectiles, man, they are the key to victory in so many of these fights. I mean, I guess one complaint I can have over um, this game, over the original Okami, is be is that um, there was a bit more enemy variation back then. You know, there were a bit more unique enemies, like you know, you'd use like wind and stuff like that to just to fight them, um, as opposed to this game, which mostly is just hack and slash. Also, I love this one: odd necklace, an item that won't reveal the future. So basically, it's completely useless, and she doesn't even need to tell the future. We could've just gone back to those three things, and she should've been perfectly fine, but nope, she has to be petty. And she's like, I also lost my necklace, here you go, get it back for me too, you pansy. Anyways, that's um really all we have to do for an Agata Forest. I'm gonna spend the last, what, three minutes of this episode? Uh, just I'm just gonna do a few things in Shinsha Field, and uh, that, uh, camera angles! That's like a pet peeve of mine in a video game. When you, you, you head up in a direction through a door, and then the game spawns you so that if you had if you hold it up still, you go back through the door again. It's like, come on, can't you just give me a proper camera angle that just allows me to hold the directional pad in one direction, and then I'll be perfectly fine off to worry about this whole uh, going back through the door I came in thing. I don't know. It's like, okay, you, whenever you move through a door, you have to like let let go of the directional pad so that you don't go in the wrong direction. It's just I don't know. It's just like, come on. Can't you just make the camera angle decently, please, so that that doesn't happen? It's just, it's just kind of annoying. Anyway, we recruit this old woman, cause, um, as long as you have the hot spring. The hot spring shows up when you've recruited eight people, I believe. I think it's eight. So once you have, um, and by this point, you can have eight people. So once you have eight people, uh, she'll show up over here in Shushu Shush Shush Field. So stop by and recruit her. I think at this point, we have the ten people we need. Uh, I, think it's exa I think we're actually at exactly ten now, which is good, because once we get hit ten, uh, goodies can be unlocked, and by goodies I mean more new brush skills we can unlock. So, now that I have uh, those 10 people, next episode I can actually buy ourselves another new brush skill, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, I have the ability to do fire now, if you remember this treasure chest way back from the beginning of the game, we can finally pick it up. It's Masterpiece Part 5. Uh, 5-2 to be exact. So it's the second Masterpiece Part 5. Which, we haven't gotten any Masterpieces Part 5 yet, we haven't even completed Masterpieces Part 3! And we're already game Masterpieces Part 5. So this game is just like, screw the order. Here's a bunch of random Masterpieces. But like I said, uh, Masterpieces Part uh, 1 through 5, uh, 4, or Masterpiece Part 4, 1 through 5, and Masterpiece Part 5, 1 through 5, they sort of operate under different rules in a sense. Like, they pretty much, um, they're just sort of scattered around the land. You can actually find those by backtracking and using your elements on in cases just like that one. So... Basically, um, you know, that's how you get those ten masteries. The other ones will be found in order, like all the other ones have been. So uh, once we complete Masterpieces Part 3, we'll start getting Masterpieces Part 4, uh, 6 through 10, and then Masterpieces Part 5, 6 through 10 after that. So basically, you just kind of have to go a little bit out of order and stuff and things. There's a little, uh, there's, there's, a, there's one of these things here, so I'm going to go ahead and burn this and get ourselves Masterpieces Part 4. Just like I said, it's like one of the 1 through 5 ones. So... Lots of backtracking to get those ones, but uh, we, that's exactly what we're doing, and it's going well. So now that we have that, we can go ahead, and this is going to save us a lot of time later when we have to. Um, this is going to just save us a lot of backtracking later to have to go get all these. Like if I had, if I waited until I had the this the proper skill to get rid of those leaf piles, and, you know, I have, I'd then have to go back here. I'd do all this backtracking. You'd probably have like one or two whole episodes of just backtracking. And I didn't want to do that, so you know what? Let's just skip ahead and fire burst. Very nice way of doing so. 
With that being said, though, guys, this is Lucky7DX signing out in the next episode. We're going to head to Hannah Valley. We're going to get the manifest there. We're going to do some stuff in Yakushi Village and wrap up all this side questy stuff to move off the plot. Bye-bye.